Hi everyone, so if you go to turn on your Apple Mac and you find yourself with a flashing folder with a question mark, this means that your startup disk is no longer available. Your computer can no longer get access to the operating system. So this is either the hard drive that has failed or the hard drive cable um, that connects it is broken. So you may have watched a bunch of other YouTube videos and found, like myself, that nothing else works. Um, so in this particular video, I'm going to show you what worked for me. So let's run through the steps and see what we can do. Firstly, if you just have a blank uh, computer screen, make sure that your brightness is turned all the way up and that your Mac is turned on. Next, before we get into the serious stuff, we can try resetting the temporary non-volatile RAM. This is the temporary RAM that is for the speaker volume and for the startup data, etc. So let's attempt at resetting the NVRAM and the PRAM. Firstly, turn off your Mac, then press and hold the Option Command P and R buttons at the same time and press the power button once. Then keep pressing the command P and R until you hear a second chime. If you don't hear a chime, just let the um, startup bar run through twice. Now that's reset the NVRAM and the PRAM. Unfortunately for myself, this hasn't worked, so I'm back to the gray flashing folder. Okay, so there is a possibility that your Mac may be trying to boot from the wrong drive or partition. So to check this, we can go into the Startup Manager. So firstly, turn off your Mac by pressing and holding down the power button. Now, when we go to restart the Mac, press and hold the Option button and press the power button once. Continue to hold the option button until you see the options of the different disk drives. As you can see on my computer, I just have the one option. You can use the arrow keys or use your mouse to select the right drive. For yourself, it may say Macintosh HD. Then simply allow your computer to boot from that drive that you selected and um, hopefully it will work. For myself, unfortunately, it didn't. So on to the next step. The next step is to try to repair the disk by getting into recovery mode and using disk utilities. So firstly, turn off the Mac again by pressing and holding down the power button. Then turn the Mac back on while pressing and holding the command plus the R key and press the power button once. Then release the keys when you hear the Apple chime or see the Apple logo on the startup screen. From here, you may have to enter your administrator password or Wi-Fi password. Uh, so hopefully one of these steps has worked for you so far. Um, if not like me, um, I couldn't get into this particular screen, so I decided to plug in my external hard drive which had my time machine backup on. Okay, so with my external hard drive with time machine on plugged in, I was able to press and hold the command and R and the power button once. And from here, I was able to get into recovery mode after entering my Wi-Fi password. So once we're in Disk Utilities, um, here you can see that I've got the time machine on the left hand side here and um, my other external hard drive, but you can see that I've got no uh, internal hard drive, it just says Disk Images, uh, just here. Um, but so you can also check here, it's not hidden, so go to the drop down menu here and click on Show All Devices and see on the left hand side if you're internal hard drive will show up. If you can see your internal hard disk, uh, select it on the left here and then go up to the option uh, first aid and uh, click on that option and repair that drive and then restart your Mac, that, that may work for you. 
So unfortunately my hard disk isn't showing so I couldn't repair it. So let's move on to the final option. Okay, so now we're still in recovery mode and connected to the internet. We're going to attempt at installing the Mac operating system on a new external hard drive. Um, you can also use an old external hard drive, but you will have to erase the disk completely. So be prepared to lose everything that's on that disk. Okay, so click on that external hard drive that we just plugged in and then go to the erase option and then name it something um, that you remember. So I called this uh, bootable drive. And then on format, make sure it's on Mac OS extended and uh, GUID partition map. So once you click erase, that's gonna erase absolutely everything on this disk so as I say make sure it's a brand new external hard drive or an external hard drive that you're prepared to lose all the data on. So now that's done we can quit disk utilities and get back to the main recovery screen so you can just hit the X here or go to file and quit, quit disk utilities. Okay, so now we're back in recovery mode. Um, we can click on reinstall Mac OS and reinstall a new copy of the operating system. Um, so we can reinstall this back onto that new bootable drive that we just plugged in. Um, fortunately, I didn't record this section very well. This may take um, some time to reinstall the Mac operating system, depending on how quick your internet speed is. Um, after it's installed, um, Apple will give you the option to migrate information from an old Mac or Time Machine. So here I use my Time Machine that is plugged in. So I'm finding that my computer is working just as fast as it was using this uh, high speed external sand disk drive. I'll leave a link to that below if you're interested. Uh, that will click through to Amazon. Um, now the only problem I have got is that um, by having an external hard drive plugged in permanently, it's using one of my USB-C ports. Um, I've only got two ports on this 2003 13 iMac, so I think in the future I may, I may just take the back off this Mac and um, try to actually replace the physical drive. I did look into this um, to get it done in store. I think it's going to be about £300, so I'll just um, give it a go myself, I think, at some point. Now there is one other important point to make. You may want to go on to um, System Preferences and go to Startup Disk here and then, um, and then make sure the disk that you're now running the operating system on is selected. I renamed my Macintosh HD during the, the formatting process. By doing this final step, your computer will know which drive to use when you next shut down and start your computer up again. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video, um, please do like and subscribe, I hope this has uh, fixed the problem for yourself, if you have any more questions please do leave a comment and uh, yeah all the best with your computer.